Hello and welcome to the channel that is all about WordPress. Today we will learn how WooCommerce Customizer plugin works within the WooCommerce based website. Before that, let me tell you something about this plugin. So, as you all know, that WooCommerce provides a lot of filters to let you customize, like button, text, labels, etc. But for that, you have to actually implement the code. But this plugin provides a setting page where you can add your customization and save them without needing to add any code. So let's add this plugin within the WordPress backend and we'll see how it is going to reflect in the front end. So we'll go to admin dashboard. So adding the plugin, we will go to plugins, add new section. Here, we will provide the plugin name and we'll search accordingly. Now, as you can see, the plugin is showing here. For me, it is showing the activate button because I have already installed it. For you, it will show the install now button because you are going to install it for the first time. So let's activate this performance custom with the plugin. Now, as you can see, the WooCommerce Customizer plugin is active. We'll go to the configure page. Now, I want to mention that the configure page is available in WooCommerce settings section, and there is a customizer tab. You can see there are options available for shop page, product page, checkout, and some miscellany. So, we'll add some data for every section and we'll see how it is going to reflect in the front end. Let's proceed with the shop page. Here, you can provide the add to cart button text. So for simple product, I will provide buy now. For variable product, I can provide buy now with this change, just to show what the difference that it is actually reflecting in the front end or not. You can also provide the text for the grouped products, out of stock products, if, if they are available. For the, if you have any product for sale, you can actually provide the text. So I will copy this text and we'll see how it's going to reflect in front end. Similarly, you can provide product this layout, like product display per page and product columns displayed per page. Let's say I provide um, six. And here I provide um, three. And let's save the changes. So now we will see in the front end how it is going to reflect in the shop page. So let's go to the shop page. Yeah, uh, side. Now if we go to the shop page in the front end, here you can see for the products that are having actually the sale. So it is how that it is reflecting the 10% off that we have used implementing the backend. You can see the button text is also changed. Like this is the simple product where I have set the buy now for the simple products. And you can see this is the variable product and you can see that changes you uh, for the buy now button. So now let's go and also you can see that I have set the products to be shown like six only per page. So it is showing the six products only. And within the columns, I wanted to show the three products only. So it is showing three only. So this is how it uh, works in the shop page. Let's go back and we'll see how it uh, reflect the changes in product detail page. So we'll go to the product page section here. Uh, tab titles product description. So, so you can see for the product page, it provides the customization for tab titles. So if you have product description tab, you can provide the text. If you have additional information tab, you can provide the text. What tab content headings should be ha should have? You can provide the text for both product description and additional information if they are available here. 
and also if they are available in the front end, then it will change accordingly. You can provide add to cart button text, out of stock text, and sales slash accordingly. So let's see like how currently the uh, product detail page shows for a particular product. As you can see here, I am with this. There is for you can see the sale is showing only sale for the add to cart. It is showing add to cart. As, and here you can see only the description tab. So it is showing description and the tab name and the description is it is as a title. So we can change this uh, from the back end. So let's update some functionality and we'll come back to the front end. So here if I provide about product as additional information tab is not there. So we'll skip this little section about the product. I took that to be like buy now. Let's add the same flash to be same percent off. So save changes. Now after saving changes, we'll go back to the front and see how it is going to reflect for the product detail page then. So let's refresh this product detail page again. Now you can see the sale text one changed the add to cart button changed it's to buy now. Here, here I have put in the tab name as about products has also changed and the title. So this is how you can customize the product detail page. Now we'll go back to the configuration section and we'll go to the checkout tab. And here we'll see, we'll see the functionality what it provides that we can customize. So here you can see, you can change the message just for the must be logged in text accordingly if you're not logged in. Open text to be shown, the login text and some miscellaneous options are available like create account checkbox default, the set to be unchecked, submit order button, text to be. So let me tell uh, you something, how you can actually implement it. And before that, we'll show you how in the checkout page in the front end it shows currently. As you can see here for the checkout page, in the coupon, have a coupon, click here to enter your code. And for uh, uh, like for the button, it shows by default place order. So let's add some functionality from the back end and see how it is going to reflect in the checkout page. So because I have already logged in, but still I can provide the text. Uh, a coupon can get, you can provide text like this. For the login text, you can you can provide the data for the create account checkbox default. It's something that if you are logged in, then you cannot see that functionality within the checkout page but for the coupon text and the submit order button, you can see the change. So let's save the changes and we'll see in the front end how it is going to reflect. So let's go to the checkout page in the front end and refresh this page and we'll see for the coupon text and the purchase button. As you can see, the, per the coupon text is changed to apply your coupon here that I have provided from the back end. And here you can also see the button is name is also changed. So now as you can see that this is how how it is easy to customize the functionality for the shop page product detail page and the checkout page without entering or implementing any code. 